markers from AliExpress. And these are the first brush markers I've seen on AliExpress. And I, I check them pretty regularly. Many um, alcohol markers on there do claim to be brush markers, but they're really bullet nibs. In fact, I have another set that claim they're brush nibs, but they're bullet nibs coming up in the rotation um, for review. But these are actually brush nibs. So I ordered the 48 color set, which set me back about $60. And if you guys aren't aware of the AliExpress phone app, I recommend you check it out if you're interested in shopping with them. The prices tend to be a little bit lower than the website itself. Um, I, I have a sneaking suspicion that they raised the website prices in order to make the uh, app prices seem like a better deal. But I don't have any confirmation on that. These are the colors that came in my 48 piece set. A couple of them are very similar and um, maybe could have been left out for something else. Y21 is very similar to R27, for example. Um, that might actually be the most, the most similar. I think it is. Oh, no. YR101 and YR103 are also very, very similar. Y, I mean, R91 and R94 are also so similar that it's difficult to tell. Um, them apart and it would be difficult to tell them apart in an illustration for a set as small as 48 it is important to try and include um, colors that are different enough that they can be utilized together so I'm going to start out um, this does not come with a blender marker so I'm supplying my own it is a Blick Studio brush marker and there's nothing inside the set to keep your markers in place although they are organized in um, a way that makes sense in terms of, oh, what the heck? It's like my nib got a little damaged somewhere in there. Um, these are organized in a way that would make sense when picking out colors. So, thinking about it, I actually want to start with R28 and knock in some blush first. And the brushes are very soft and flexible, almost too soft, but considering how inexpensive these markers are, um, it's, it's fine, especially compared to like other markers. They're, they're comparable in um, flexibility to uh, Windsor and Newton's brush markers. And if you've never really used alcohol markers before and you're interested in using them, these might be a good way to get started. All right, so I knocked in a little bit of pink. I'm trying to keep my colors in order, but it, they're gonna end up out of order. Now I'm gonna go over this, all of it with Y29, which is, um. It's a little darker than I would normally color Kara, so I'm going to try and use my blending uh, solution, my Blick Studio brush, to help me out a little bit. So far though, color saturation is good. Uh, ink goes down smoothly. These don't feel like they were dry or underfilled. Um, the case already uh, stores them vertically. I recommend storing the whole thing horizontally. Um, now this color is very dark for Kara, so I am going to try to blend it out some. It's darker than I would normally go. Um, it's almost a tan though, so this might be a good color for darker, darker Caucasian skin tones or lighter Hispanic skin tones, for example, or some Asian skin tones. So I may actually end up uh, cannibalizing parts of this set to include in my existing marker collection because there are some colors that fill gaps. Like some of the reds are pretty good. Just from swatching it, they look like they're pretty good. I do find the barrel to be a little bit bulky and a little bit frustrating to uh, use just because I have small hands and it's a little bit bigger than I'm comfortable with. And I'm not applying 
applying my color all that carefully either because I have a feeling I'm going to have to do some layering and some blending out. So that's pretty intense for Kara. Let's try to lighten this a bit. One of the nice things about alcohol markers is you can work back and forth to build up the colors you need. So the blender doesn't appear to be doing a whole lot for the color. I mean, it's doing a bit. It's not quite lightening it as much as I would like. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll go over it again. Okay, so that's dried a bit. I'm sorry for the shadow my box is casting. Uh, I don't want to change the orientation I have it in because it would lose uh, where I took my marker from. And for those of you who aren't familiar with alcohol markers, um, 60 some odd dollars, I think it was like 61 is, and that included shipping, is actually a very fair price to pay. It's very cheap, in fact, for a 48 piece set of, of alcohol based markers that have a brush tip on them. Now the colors do uh, layer very dark. So I will probably stop layering her skin for the most part at this stage. A, because I don't really have a lot of other skin tones in this set. And uh, B, because it's already getting really dark for her. Set this aside and pull my R back out. her skin I'm going to use very sparingly PB75 but I need to let her skin dry first and to do her freckles I want to use YR103 Okay, so that layer has dried. It's time to move on with shading. And you guys can't see this, but I'm working around a cat who is really insistent on sitting in my lap right now. And he's actually, okay, making it really hard to work. So this purple is a lot darker than I would normally use. Uh, so I'm going to use it very sparingly because um, trying to blend it out would probably make her face um, very muddy and that's where using the brush is really nice because um, you can have a very light hand 
lighter than you'd be able to achieve with a um, a bullet nib. Wish this cat had picked a better time to demand attention. And so far, all of the nibs uh, perform are performing well. My uh, flesh tone that I used to do her skin was a little, the nib itself was a little bit damaged, it seemed like, but it seemed to perform um, like with no noticeable effect. It seemed fine. In a second, I'll show you guys a close up of the nib. Um, seems pretty juicy, seems to get enough ink flow. Here's the chisel. I very, very rarely use those. Um, let's try to put that back. Now I'm going to try to blend out using the skin tone just a little bit, just in certain areas, since it does seem like kind of a harsh shadow. See, this is the nib that um, looks damaged. I can't get it to focus. I don't know how that happened. I think it happened not on my watch. This one damage nib does make coloring a little bit harder. It's a little more scrubby than I'm used to. And that purple is looking a little bit muddy, so I really need to leave it alone because it will just get worse. So I think I'm going to switch over, or try to switch over, to a light blue. Um, I think I'm going to go with B67 here, powder blue in this set, and try to put some shadow on her eyes, although, so my really, my really big problem with this set, set seems great so far, is just color selection. Um, I would like more uh, pastels, I'd like some lighter skin tones, I'd like some warmer, darker skin tones, um, but that's my personal preference. If you are just learning to use markers, um, you don't have to use some of the techniques I use that are based on having access to a bigger set and end up kind of muddy, like this shading technique, or you could even purchase one or two, um, like Copic Chows, for example, or Prismacolor, um, their brush markers, and augment a set like this with it as you need colors. So this could be a really good set for student artists, for example. Um, maybe like a high school kid who's um, very interested in alcohol markers, but the parent isn't quite ready to commit to, you know, the massive expense of a nice set of alcohol markers, this would be a really good alternative to that sort of a financial commitment. Um, you are definitely going to need to buy your own um, blender marker, and you could even do sort of halvesies. You could buy open stock Blick Studio markers, and I have a list of my recommended colors up on my blog, which I will link back here, um, and then also buy these brush markers and end up with a pretty good collection for like under a hundred dollars. Sorry, wanted to grab a photo since I will be also doing a write-up on this. So if there's anything um, that I kind of gloss over, it will hopefully, ideally, definitely be in the blog post. So please do check that out if you're intrigued by these markers. I'll also include a link on where you can find them. I 
I was a little bit tempted to actually do a mixed review using my Copics as well as these. Um, but the reason I didn't is because I figure the people who are going to be the most interested in this set are the people who have no markers at all. So for them, this set is going to be all everything, all of their markers to begin with. So they're not going to have a, sm a different set to pull from. That's why I usually only augment with like one blender marker. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in her hair. This is a good test for these markers because when I do the hair, I really use the brush as a flicking motion. And this particular YR, it just, and part of it is also I use mixed media paper when I do these. Um, mixed media paper tends to be outside of watercolor paper, the thirstiest paper you're going to use with markers. Um, and it, it tends to be my preference because it allows for a lot of blendability. But sometimes with cheaper markers, it causes um, compatibility issues because it is so thirsty that it tends to suck up too much of the ink. And I'll also say, if you have a particular way of using markers or alcohol inks that works for you, that gives you the results you like, then there is no wrong way to use markers. The only wrong way is when you're frustrated with your results and you've tried a variety of things and you're still not finding it, you know, then, then we need to revisit the problems you're having. And if you're ever having specific problems or difficulty achieving certain effects, and it's something certainly if it's something you've seen me demonstrate here, please do leave me a comment or send me an email. Um, I would be happy to try and help you out. Alright, so that's the basics, basis, base, there we go, the base for the hair. I was able to um, get fairly decent um, flicking motions with the brush. So I'm going to switch over now to a darker color, I think R94, black brown. And um, the color chips are moderately indicative of the color you're getting inside, which is impressive for such inexpensive alcohol markers. So really these and Blick Studio Brush markers are going to probably take the cake. I need to, I've reviewed so many alcohol markers, I need to like develop an award system <laughs> and award them to my favorites. Uh, these and Blick Studio markers are both very inexpensive, Studio brush markers, if there's a caveat there, it has to have the brush, are both inexpensive markers that perform very well. They're very accessible to people with a low budget or who are just getting started. Um, these, you do have to order them through AliExpress. Um, whereas with the Blick markers, you can buy them in Blick stores or order them through the Blick website. But both of them are good markers, good brush markers, uh, a great introduction to marker use to someone who um, might only use markers sparingly or don't really, uh, don't really yet have a collection of markers. I own many, many Blick Studio markers in addition to my Copics and my Prismacolors and I use them all the time. They're mixed in with my Copics, so I use them interchangeably. You can see them in many videos. And uh, I am not paid by either company to say these things. I'm not paid by anyone to do these reviews other than my backers on Patreon um, and what little ad revenue I get through YouTube. So if you enjoy my videos, please do watch at least 30 seconds of the ads that show before these videos. That 
that's the only way many content creators get paid is through you watching some of the ad. I mean, you don't have to physically sit there. You could go make a sandwich, go to the bathroom or whatever. Um, but the ad does need to run for at least 30 seconds. Otherwise, we don't see any money from that. So there's kind of no point. I need to let her hair dry. I'm sort of, <laughs> the ink on her hair dry. I'm sort of thinking about what I want to do for the background. Um, I did sort of drop a shadow already and I really don't feel like um, masking. So I might do something just really simple for the background. I also want to use as many colors as I can since this is a 48 piece set and it would be kind of pointless to, you know, not try and give her range. Um, so, and it's, there's, they're really nice, bright colors, which is something, um, Copic can be hit or miss about. Like, these are all intense colors. So I, I thought I was going to give this set away to somebody, but I think I might keep it for myself. Because there is enough in here that I don't actually own, so... Let's start here with the flower. And I'm using R14. And I'll let that dry so I can do another layer with that color. And I'm moving back over to the hair just to see how much layering I can get in. And these have a bit of a sweet smell to them, but it is really not overpowering. I honestly only noticed it when I realized that a lot of you guys do have sensitive noses um, and certain color markers do make you kind of sick. So I try to always check to see, um, you know, how strong the odor is. And really, I only noticed it when I actively smelled it. So, um if you have a sensitive nose, these markers might be good for you. Although some of the markers I thought were very unobtrusive. Other artists say they can't use them because they smell too strong. So I, I don't know. If anyone else has uh, used these markers or uses these markers and has had a problem with the odor, please let me know. Um, I'd like to make that information available to my other to my, my viewers, other viewers. All right, second layer. So this red is already so saturated and so intense that I'm not getting any layering with that color. So I'm gonna have to switch. And it's sort of a scarlet red. So a good choice to move to would be like R11 here, which is Carmine. That's another, um, there are some non-pigment names in here um it, but you know what honestly most of us who use alcohol markers we're very familiar with that it's not the biggest problem so for coloring something like a button let me let me get really in there sorry about the shadow so something like a button once you've colored it in and you're doing another darker layer, most buttons have um, either a recessed area in the middle and the edges are raised or the reverse and you can color it either way. And then we're gonna use old red, which is a sort of a violet brownie red. heavier paper like this mixed media paper you go ahead and you apply it immediately if you want the color to sort of stand out on top of it you need to allow the ink to dry fully and if you're having problems with bleeding on heavier cardstocks like this you might want to give your colors a moment to dry before you add additional layers sorry i have the camcorder is always plugged in and the cord is just always casting a shadow all right, so we've got that. 
and I think I want her dress to be either a blue or a blue green and I have some really nice options um, for blue there's PB 63 and I can then go darker with PB 64 so let me oh I'm sorry yeah 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 PB 63 so cerulean blue make up the body of the dress And um, unless I state otherwise, all of the art shown on this channel is my own, like something that I've drawn. It's my own art. And usually with these field test videos, I use the main character from my children's comic, Seven Inch Kara, which you can find on my website. Check out the card here. I use her as sort of the test dummy. Um, if you are interested in seeing me render something else or using a specific for example, maybe you're curious to see if color pencils are a good tool for, you know, um, rendering flowers or rendering people. Well, then if you become a backer of my Patreon, you can request that I specifically test for that. And you can check out information on my Patreon here at this card. And this is a not-for-profit or it, mm, I don't make a profit off of the YouTube or the blog. It would be nice if I did, considering how much time they take up. But I, as it stands, I don't. So if you enjoy content like this, if you benefit from content like this, please consider purchasing something from my shop. I am a professional comic artist, and I do work as an illustrator. Um, sending some work my way. I do take commissions. I draw kids. I draw pets. I draw couples. I draw all sorts of things. Um, backing my Patreon, I have all sorts of goodies for my generous patrons, including um, monthly live streams where I answer your questions and do demonstrations. Um, so that kind of ties into what I just mentioned. Um, let's see what else. You can come visit me at a convention. I list the conventions I'll be at on the sidebar on my blog. Or you can buy things using my Amazon and Dick Blick affiliate links. That helps out. Or um, just consuming the ads that are on my content. Just 30 seconds of that and I see some money. And it's not a whole lot of money. Like, I'm not, I'm not rolling. This doesn't pay my bills. Um, I don't currently have any sponsors, although I am in talks with a couple of companies. And I will disclose that when um, that information becomes relevant. And I'm working to get some of my artwork released as digi stamps, either through other shops that sell digi stamps or through my own. So if that's something you're interested in, please keep an eye out or please let me know that you're interested. If you have a favorite shop that you'd like to see my work sold through, please contact them on my behalf because I've contacted many of these sort of shops and I just don't get a reply from most of them. Please consider contacting them on my behalf and letting them know how much you love my work and that I'm someone they should be watching. So this is the second marker that has a damaged nib on it. And I will show you guys as soon as I lay down this initial layer of color. And it's very streaky, but I'm going to go ahead and lay down another layer of color. And the dress Kara is wearing is based off of, I think, a 1950s children's uh, swimsuit cover-up dress. A lot of her clothing um, comes from sort of older inspirations. All right, let's see. Let's see, it's a little bit damaged, not super noticeable. It's not really having a negative effect. I just thought I'd mention it as these markers are basically new. Um, the only thing I used them for was to uh, do the swatch test for you guys. And I'm pretty careful with how I put my markers away since Windsor and Newton pigment markers are such delicate, delicate flowers that require, you know, kid gloves. So I just try to treat all my markers with care, especially considering how expensive some of these things can get. So right now I'm mostly just darkening certain areas. I am applying another layer of ink where the fold in her dress are because this is a gathered dress so there would be a significant number of folds but I'm also trying to smooth out how noticeable that first layer is in terms of streaking.
another way, um, if you're interested in helping this channel out, another way you can is by sharing my videos with your friends who would be interested. Positive word of mouth goes a long way, and I'm having a lot of trouble gaining traction. So if you know somebody who would enjoy my channel or enjoy my videos or even just enjoy this particular review, please share the video with them. Don't just tell them about it. Um, send it to them because that would help a lot. I spend a lot of time and money researching these products so I can share them with you guys. And that sort of support would really help me out a lot. It would go a long way. And the same goes for the comic, you know, maybe you're not interested in it because you don't have kids or you don't like comics. I mean, you know, it's fine, whatever. I would love it if you gave it a shot, especially if you enjoy how I illustrate because that's, it's this but watercolor. Um, but I understand that, you know, maybe you don't have the money, maybe you just don't have the interest. But if you know of somebody who would be interested in it, please do send it to them. It would really help me out a lot. And I really rely on support from you guys to be able to make content like this. Okay, so that was two layers of PB63. Now I'm going to use PB64. And it looks like a very dark green, Orion blue, but it's actually not as blue green as it looks. At least the swatch says it's not as blue green as it looks. Gonna reinforce those folds. I've actually gotten used to the size of the marker now, so it's not really so much of an issue. I think part of the problem was that skin tone was a little bit dry, so it was dragging a little bit on the paper, making it harder to render. I do want to go a little bit darker in certain parts. So I think I'm going to switch over to PB69, which is Mazarine Blue. And if I need to, I'll blend it out using Orion Blue. And with folds in clothing, you really do, uh, if you can afford to bump up the contrast, you really do want to do that so that the folds read as folds. trying to keep my head out of the shot, keep bumping it against the camcorder. I know my head being in the shot a lot is a big problem for me and it's something I've been working on. I'm not unaware that it's an issue. I'm just trying really hard to correct it and having some difficulty. So having sufficient contrast in your work 
whether you are an illustrator or a card maker or a stamper or what have you, having sufficient contrast in your work is really what's going to uh, make it easy to read, prevent it from being muddy, um, and just really make it stand out. And if you put down a color that's a little too dark with almost any alcohol marker, these included, you can blend it out a little bit just to make it go with the image better. So it's not like one weird area of shadow, for example. Okay, so the majority of the dress has been rendered. Now it's time to do some of the accents. And this is going to get a little bit busy because I do want to use as many colors as I can. Also, I went and got one of the Mary Mecco bathing suits from Target. I got kind of lucky. Uh, I picked a, a Target that's kind of un, unpopular, and uh, I went early. So I managed to get one of the really cute flower stall bathing suits. And um, it's blue with all of these primary colors on it that really sing. And so I was, I've, I'm feeling kind of inspired by those bright, fun primaries as well. And normally, I don't dress Kara in primaries. I dress her in sort of natural colors. Um, for reasons related to the story. So if you're interested in that, you should totally check out 7-Inch Kara. And if you live in the Nashville area, there are copies in the library system. So you can literally check it out by checking it out of our local library. And um, if you live in St. Charles Parish, there should finally be copies taken out of special collections. I don't know why they were in special collections. I donated them. It's kind of frustrating that they did that when I said, hey, these are for kids. Please put them out so kids can read them. But, you know, I'm just a comic artist. I don't understand sometimes what goes, in people, goes through people's heads. So if you live in St. Charles Parish and you're watching this, you should be able to check out a copy soon. They, there's three copies and I have a friend who works for the library system and she was able to convince the YA librarian at one of the branches to move it to general, like I think general collections. Um, so that means there's two sitting in special collections, which doesn't make any sense to me and I'm gonna have to maybe go have a chat and find out why uh, when I go visit in July, June or in August, I'm gonna be in Louisiana so many times this year. Or if you have insight into that, please let me know. I would, I'm would. i trying really hard to get copies of my children's comic in libraries because there aren't really a lot of children's comics, and kids deserve to have good stuff. And I did ALA last year, and I was repeatedly told that they love the book, they love the book, but they're only allowed to buy books that are on a special list. And then they wouldn't tell me what the list was. So I assume some of you guys are librarians because librarians are definitely the sort of people who like, enjoy illustrative art, I have found in my experience. So if any of you guys understand what's going on with that, or could give me some guidance, I would really appreciate it because I'm kind of doing this on my own and it is not easy at all. I mean, I never thought it was going to be easy, easy, but it's like there are ridiculous roadblocks that pop up that seem to be like special for me. Because when I talk to other children's illustrators, they're like, yeah, no, I didn't have that problem. But they also did it years prior. So, trying to troubleshoot that. All right, so I put down a more golden yellow and now I'm blending it out with Y35 which is the yellow I put down originally and I have a 
haven't used any purple yet. Um, so I could use purple, and I think I will use purple. I have two, I have several good purples actually. There's PB73 and PB81. So I'm gonna start with PB73 over here on these. And I think I'm going to also, maybe regrettably, use it on the ribbon here. It doesn't really matter. I'm not trying to make fine art. I'm just trying to demonstrate some markers to you guys. And so far, this field test is going quite well. I'm very pleased uh, with this purchase. I do have a friend who's interested in learning um, how to use alcohol markers. I might loan her this set, but I will definitely want this set back. All right, so I left some white streaks in to imply that this is satin ribbon. And the reason I didn't do it behind her is because that's cast in a shadow. And now we've got Rick Rack, which has a matte sort of texture to it. And I think I want to do an orange check pattern on her pockets. I'm going to freehand it because I am both brave and a little stupid sometimes. And I'm trying to go with the motion of the fabric of her dress. So they're not just straight lines, they're, they're curved slightly. Alcohol markers are great. Um, if you, if you want to do a check pattern, alcohol markers can be great for that because you can layer standalone illustrations like this I really enjoy adding fabric design to her outfits on the comic itself um, I do there's so many pages and it, all of them are painted so um, that's a little less feasible I do add it when I can especially if an outfit is only going to be on like one or two pages I'll try to draw um, a design on her clothes but uh, for outfits that span the entire chapter I don't, because that would just take me forever to do. Okay. Back to the purple. And if you want to be able to build up tones with the same marker, letting it dry between applications is a great way to do that, because if you immediately apply it, it's going to soak into this already saturated paper. And you're not going to notice much of a difference, but if you let it dry, it's basically going to stack on top of it. orange is very orange um, 
more orange than I thought. I'm telling you guys, these colors are really intense. So um, if you want to do bright, colorful, very saturated pieces, these are, these are a good pick. And then you could augment that collection with like skin tones from uh, Blick Studio Brush, for example. In fact, you could even use my giveaway video announcement because uh, I go over all the colors because I specifically put together that video, uh, that set based on usable skin tones to help people who want to render people. Um, because I've noticed that marker collections skimp on skin tones. So you could use that video as inspiration for picking your colors. So now I'm going to a darker purple. It's P81. And for those of you following along with literally any other marker brand, these color names don't mean anything. But hopefully this will be a useful video for someone who does decide to buy these markers and they want to get started using them. them back into their order. So now we're almost done other than maybe adding details or um, doing something with the background. And I do want to do something with the background because it's pretty plain. And um, I need a minute to think about it. I might end up going with cool gray because I did use some very saturated colors um, in the majority of the piece. Speaking of, I need to take a progress shot for the blog, which if you're not reading, you should be reading. I post good stuff there and tutorials like all the time. Um, let's see, maybe CG1 and just sort of, sometimes I feel like doing background illustrations and I'll draw flowers and other cute things. And sometimes I'm just like, mm, I just wanna, get this test handled. These brushes are capable of very sensitive line work. So I am very pleased with these. And like I said, I will include the listing information in the blog posts on netasoup.blogspot.com. So please do check that out. Um, I am not an Ali affiliate, AliExpress affiliate. I don't even know if they have an affiliate program. Uh, so all opinions are my own. This is not sponsored content. I feel really strongly about egalitarian art education. So I do try to put some out there especially since I paid out the butt to go to art school. And if that's a topic you ever want to ask me about, you should become a Patreon backer. Um, and you can totally needle me for information. I would love to answer your questions in the backer request live stream, which is private. Otherwise, you can find my thoughts and experiences with art school, again, on the blog. Have you guys noticed a trend here? I'm just going to keep pointing you to the blog because if you're not reading it, you should be reading it. There's a lot of good stuff on there. It's taken me years to write it, so. And it's, it's free for you to read, so, like, why would you not? Unless you are not in a reading or you have difficulty with that. And then that's what the YouTube's for. try to be as accommodating as I can be. So if there's ever anything else, any other way I can accommodate your needs, please do let me know. 
and if it's something that costs money or a significant amount of time, I will probably make it a backer reward to help off. I can't afford to eat all those costs, you know, help offset those costs. So I am blending out this cool gray using my blender marker. And something that is true for almost all, I would say all, all alcohol markers, is you're going to have a lot of difficulty getting a nice, seamless, watercolor-esque blend with darker colors than you are with lighter colors, which is why I always want to see sets with more lighter colors, because those are your blending colors. Now, this set doesn't really have a lot of... Um, of those lighter colors. I think they're really just trying to offer a decent range of colors for the selection they have. 48 is, 48 might seem like a lot of colors. Um, it's really, but you know, there's a lot you have to cover and they dedicated a lot of space to cool grays and warm grays, which makes these useful for a variety of things, not just for rendering um, candy colored things but it does take up a lot of space that could have been spent on like earth tones and skin tones, which tend to get skimped. And those, if you're an illustrator, those are often the colors you're gonna use a lot. And I think one of the reasons people aren't better about rendering a variety of skin tones is because a lot of people do buy pre-assembled um, marker sets to get started with, and that's where things start to fall apart because those marker sets offer very limited skin tones and what skin tones they do offer this set pretty is in that category tend to be primarily caucasian and the browns that are included tend to be more difficult to use as skin tones you really have to know what you're doing and you really have to work at it um and that's not an excuse for us not to put the effort out there to render a variety of skin tones. It, I'm just explaining that a lot of younger artists may not feel um, like they have the tools they need in order to do so with the types of pre-assembled color sets that are available on the market. And that's something I'd love to see companies like get serious about fixing. And it's why I do put out recommended marker lists when I can. And those tend to be so skin tone heavy because I recognize that it's a problem and I want to try and help. In fact, I have some more skin tone videos coming up. I'd always meant for it to be a series. I just, everything I do takes time. So I'm working on that. So we're pretty much done with this illustration. I'm just adding some cheap, cheaty shading with that cool gray. All right, so I think that's about it. So what are my thoughts on the double line markers from AliExpress. I think these are great. I think they're an affordable alternative to Copics. They're even cheaper than Blick Studio markers, which were my current cheapest or my latest cheapest uh, alternative for Copics. Um, you can get them through AliExpress. There is a website on here, uh, G-E-N-V-A-N-A.com, Genvana, and I'm gonna check that out soon. Um, I ordered mine on AliExpress. They have a brush tip, which performs quite well. And 
tip, which honestly I didn't even use because I never use chisel tip markers or very, very rarely use chisel tip markers. If you're interested in learning more about these markers, please check out my blog, natasoup.blogspot.com. And if you're interested in helping me create more content like this, please uh, consider becoming a backer on Patreon. These sort of posts are not cheap to do, um, and I do them partially because I enjoy creating this sort of content. I do enjoy playing around with art supplies, but also because many other artists don't have the time and the money to mess around with supplies that may not perform properly. And I remember being a girl um, when I was just getting into art and illustration. So I guess I was like 16 or 17. I was really getting serious. And I remember fighting with supplies and how discouraging that was. And I remember the first time I tried to use watercolors, I was using like kind of garbagey to be really honest, Crayola watercolor pencils. And it just, it looked horrible. And I remember feeling so discouraged because I couldn't understand why I was having trouble using these materials when um, online people seem to be to be able to do, to bend them to their will. So I'm really passionate about making this sort of stuff accessible, especially as funding for the arts is continually cut in schools and marginalized. And, uh, you know, I feel like the best way to fight these sort of things is through education and accessibility. So, um, you know, I am passionate about putting this stuff out here. Um, I don't really make a whole lot of money out of it yet. It would be nice to make a living doing this because I spend a living's amount of time doing it, but we're not quite at that point. And if you'd like to help me reach that point, if you enjoy content like this, and if you'd like to show some support, um, you can find out more information about what your money goes to through my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash natosoup. Um, I try to list new tiers and new rewards uh, as a need arises as people seem interested and i also try to go above and beyond in delivering new content to help people oh and if you're you're curious right now i'm just adding a cute dot pattern using a white signo gel pen these are opaque gel pens uh you can get them on amazon you can find them at walmart um I, this is like my go-to white gel pen. Many artists use soccer jelly roll gel pens. I have trouble with those clogging up on me. Um, it could be the humidity. It could just be me. I'm not really sure what it is, but they've never worked well. But for me personally, but Signos have always uh, been up to the challenge. And I'm just adding little circles to add a surface pattern to her dress so it's not just blue and this is useful if you have markers that are sort of um running out of ink for example or streaky you can kind of distract the eye by judiciously adding a pattern or a decoration on top of it the eye is less likely to notice if you break it up visually the eye is less likely to notice areas that might have gotten less um ink if you go over it with a pattern and it's very easy to do that with a gel pen. Um, so I think, I think that's about it for this. If you guys ever have any questions, please do ask in my comments. I do try to get to all of them. I do get an overwhelming number of comments, especially Due to the unboxing videos I do with arts, well, I do for myself. I pay for those myself, but they're of art snacks and snack uh, sketch, yeah, art snacks and sketch box. Um, I do get an overwhelming number of comments through those videos that tend to not. They just take a lot of, of emotional energy to answer. Some some of them, some of them can be really kind of mean, um, unnecessarily so. And uh, so I will try to get to your questions. Um, you can email me, and that is a much better way to make sure I see your question. Or you can become a patron and get priority access to that sort of stuff. 
try to answer with those questions immediately since they are my paying customers. All right, so I'm Becca Hilburn. This was a review of the double line brush markers from AliExpress. I thought they were great. I recommend them if you're starting a marker collection or if you're just interested in picking up a few alcohol markers. They're not available in open stock. They are available in smaller sets. They're available in a larger set as well. Please check the blog for more information, including product listings and a link. This was not a sponsored post unless you count me sponsoring it myself and my patrons sponsoring me. I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys have a great day. I hopefully will see you later. If you enjoyed this video, if you benefited from this video, if this video helped you out in any way, please remember to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day. Goodbye. Hey guys, Becca Hilburn here. Um, I don't actually remember. I don't think I recorded a video of me swatching these. So I'm going to go ahead and do a demonstration video. These are Marvie La Plume fine brush alcohol markers. And those of you who watched my April Arts Next video have already seen one of these. And when I received that, I was so excited because these are like finer tip alcohol markers. And I don't know that anybody's doing them yet. And I'm rustling around grabbing a Pintel, uh, not a, a pit pin, because in terms of size, these are very similar. So let me go ahead and lay them side by side and zoom y'all in so you can see. Now, these are both pin size um, art markers. The Pintel, I mean, the Faber-Castell pit pin is um, indie ink based, whereas the La Plume is alcohol ink based, so you could even um, do the La Plumes first and then do details like sharp details on top with the pit pen, um, and it wouldn't dissolve into the um, alcohol ink. So for those of you who are looking for ways to do very fine details, these might be an excellent solution for you. And for those of you who are interested in um, markers for coloring books, both the pit pins and the La Plumes make good choices, although they do have their own downfalls. The La Plumes, being that they are alcohol-based markers, will sink, uh, soak through your paper. So if you have um, if you have uh, single-sided pages rather than double-sided pages, these could be good. And you just slip a piece of cardstock in there, and it won't bleed through to the next set of pages. So I just took out a pit pin permanent, I mean a lip pin permanent, and these are also alcohol-based inks. So these pins are not compatible with these pins. However, they are compatible with the favorite Castell pins. And I was so excited about my Marvy Le Pen, I mean Le Plume, that I went and I ordered the entire 36 collection. It's available in 36 colors. Those of you who have the original Le Plumes know that that has a 144 color collection. This is only 36 colors, um, but they are, it's a good range of colors, I think. And um, I was, I'm sorry, I was just so excited about them. I'm going to pull out a Copic marker, just for comparison's sake. I know Copic isn't the end-all, be-all. Um, I tend to go for Copic because that's what most people are familiar with. It's a good comparison. Most people have seen them. Um, so the Le Pen is actually pin size, and it has a posting cap, unlike many alcohol markers, which don't feature posting caps. And the brush on the Le Pen is much smaller than the brush on the Copic. And if you see my phone, it, I'm taking photos for the blog, I apologize. However, the La Plume is single-sided rather than double-sided. And it has a color name here on the barrel on the sticker. So this is Flash. But it also has a family name and a color name with a color chip up here on the cap, which makes them a little easier to use than um, so it really makes them very very similar to the pit pins other than the pit pins also have a color body and my 36 color set I ordered it from Jerry's Artorama it was back ordered so it took a little longer and it felt 
like forever because I was excited about them and I wanted them to come in. Um, and it actually came with a duplicate. So I technically only have 35 colors. Now I did figure out which one was the duplicate and I did figure out which one I'm missing and I ordered it open stock, that one marker from Jerry's. So you can, you can get these in a couple of different um, combinations. And the box is pretty, pretty plain. And it seems like they are mainly focusing this at um, like crafters rather than illustrators, but I'm gonna totally popularize these with illustrators. Um, and I plan on using mine as an addition to um, my alcohol marker collection. So for finer details because of that little brush. Now the brush is a fiber brush, which is, <laughs> I'm not a fan of fiber brushes. Um, the brush is a fiber brush like the pit pen, so it is prone to getting torn up, but these are not refillable, so um, probably by the time your brush is just becoming a hot mess, um, it's time to switch it out anyway. And these are produced by Uchida Marvi, um, so Uchida of America, and um, if you're interested in seeing the full review of these markers rather than an overview, please check out my blog at natosoup.blogspot.com or watch further videos in my, in my, all my channel. More videos are coming up. This is the field test in progress for this. But I thought I would demonstrate a little bit for you guys today because I'm excited about these markers. And um, so many times when it comes to art supplies, my excitement leads to heartache and heartbreak. So I am going to pull out a Copic sketch pull out a very differently colored Marvy and then pull out a pit pen. So we're going to lay down a wash of alcohol ink without letting it dry. Well, hopefully, I guess it did dry, dry pretty quick. Actually, there's something else we can do, but I'll show you guys that in a minute. So um, this is cover stock. It is coated cover stock. Um, I don't actually recommend it. I love inking on it, but I don't like using markers on it, but it was what I had handy. So I am actually going to grab a different kind of paper because I want to show you guys some blending and I'm not going to get blending on this cover stock. That's why it's important to know your papers and to watch artists who know their papers. So I'm going to do my demonstration on 300 series Strathmore mixed media paper. This is what I use for my alcohol marker tests. Um, I use a variety of papers when I use markers. I do try to let you guys know what paper I'm using because it does make a difference. I have been told by another artist who does not regularly follow my art that um, I'm totally using the wrong paper. And um, it really depends on what you're looking for. I like very soft, subtle blends. So I like thirsty papers, not necessarily coated papers. If you want sharp work, sort of like this up here, you're gonna wanna use um, coated papers and marker papers. So I'm going to go ahead and saturate with my Copic. I want it to be wet when I go ahead and use the alcohol Marvy Le Pen because I want it to sort of feather out. Then I'm going to do a section that I am going to saturate just as much, but I'm going to allow it to dry. Okay, very saturated. So we're going to switch over here now to the pit pen and I'm going to saturate it again just as much and these shouldn't react because one is alcohol based and the pit pen is water based and it's permanent when dry it's India ink based and I have um, videos and content about pit pens I have a pit pen review that is a very comprehensive pit pen review coming up on the blog so by the time you guys see this video it should be up so if you're interested in pit pens um, you should check that out. So this is still damp and you can tell when alcohol markers are still damp and would still be reactive when it feels cold. And the reason it feels cold is because the rubbing alcohol, this is a bottle, a spray bottle of rubbing alcohol, the rubbing alcohol is evaporating. So the it's taking the heat with it because heat is, I mean, cold is what? An absence of heat. 
And since I'm waiting, I'll go ahead and demonstrate the Le Pen Permanent, which is also alcohol-based. Okay, so we've got a saturated area. And this is a fine liner. And then we'll do a different demonstration. And I'll zoom in because I fear that you guys just can't see what I'm doing. I hate this cord. I need to tape it to the stand or something. Infomercial moment. Could someone invent a better way? So you're getting, I'm getting, one is getting, uh, smearing with the Le Pen Permanent, and that's because it's alcohol and alcohol. So you can't use this with alcohol line arts. So, um, although the one on top is a little sharper than I expected. Now, this is mostly dry. So we can go ahead, and you see how this is sort of blended out? into the yellow ochre I put down. This should uh, ideally be much sharper. And it looks like it will be. So this is blended out and this won't. And um, that's because we allowed our first application of alcohol marker to dry before we applied our second application. And this is another reason why it is important that we as artists, as crafters, as creators, we're given sufficient information about the products we're using so we understand compatibility. Many art supply companies seem confused when we ask those sort of questions. It's not because we want to make it at home. It's because we just want to know what works with what. So I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to go ahead and put down some pit pen. And this is going to take longer to dry because it's water-based. And now I'm going to go over it with alcohol marker. And I'm really falling in love with mixed media, um, even just different types of markers used in conjunction because it really frees up, it really gives you a lot of options as to what you can do. So we're going to go ahead and just sort of noodle around with blending these Marvies. And because they are a finer tip, they do um, have difficulty covering larger areas, but they're not designed, they're, they're fine brush pens, so they're not designed to cover large areas of paper. They're meant to add details. So theoretically, let's say you're a stamper who loves teeny tiny intricate stamps. And, you know, you see other artists using, um, other stampers using, stampers are artists. You see other creators on YouTube, for example, using um, big bulky alcohol markers to do bigger pieces. But you do these tiny, pretty little things. And uh, you're pretty sure these just won't cut it. It's going to be so hard to get into all those nooks and crannies. Well, that seems to be what these are for. And also, like, perhaps doing delicate tattoos on an illustration, or maybe very wispy hair, or very fine eyelashes. So these are all about those details. So I look forward to sharing the field tests for these markers with you. I'm excited about them. And I do need to say that as much as I love Jerry's Artorama, and um, you guys should totally watch their YouTube channel because the grandson of Jerry, Mike, does a phenomenal job with it. It's one of the very few, um, I don't want to say corporate, but sort of um, like store YouTubes that doesn't feel kind of fake and canned. Um, I love it. I love his channel. They seem great. Um, also, as a an Instagram, you guys should follow Mike Not Jerry. He seems to really be trying to promote it and to, to grow it. So I'll give, I'll give him a plug because I love the store. Um, there's one in Nashville. I love going there. I never go in with a game plan because <laughs> you never know what you're gonna find at Jerry's. Um, I love going there just to find weird stuff. 
they carry different brands than other stores do. Um, my, my formative years as an artist were kind of marked with having a Dick Blick within walking distance of my classes. So I got very familiar with what Dick Blick offers and Jerry's offers very different things. And I'm also biased because for my 19th birthday, my dad bought me the 20th anniversary, I believe, wooden Prismacolor set with the 120 colors and he ordered it from Jerry's. Um, so I just, I have like a kind of a long history with Jerry's Artorama. But that all said, of this YouTube, I would totally love it if they were, but they're not. I just genuinely love going there. I love art supplies. I love art supply stores. And they're where I got these. Um, not in person, actually. I ordered them from the site, and I will provide you guys with the link. To my knowledge, Jerry's does not have an affiliates program, so I am not seeing any financial benefit other than you guys watching my ads. I am not seeing any financial benefit from this. I just thought the product was really cool and I wanted it for myself. This is one of the few alcohol markers I bought in a while that I didn't purchase for the purposes of review. I bought them for myself, but I figured I would share them with y'all. If you guys are as weirdly excited by alcohol markers as I am. So, um, if you find this sort of content useful, interesting, helpful, oh, sorry, I'm trying to put them away because I try to do clean up at the end of the video, so I don't have a whatever. Um, if you find this sort of content helpful, useful, inspiring, what have you, please make sure you hit like, you subscribe, and you share it with your friends, because you sharing it with your friends helps me build my audience, and that is important to me. So please be a friend, please treat me like a friend, and share stuff of mine that you enjoy with your friends, because friends share, don't they, right? Like, we were taught that by Barney, and in kindergarten, and by mom and dad, friends share. So please share these videos and help me build up a larger audience I'm trying to get established here on YouTube. Um, and please check out some of my other videos and please keep checking for this field test which is coming up soon. I'm Becca Hilburn. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day.